Praise the Lord that we have a wonderful time uh, during Christmas season, and we know that God uh, bless you also because in His grace and His presence, we always be blessed. This morning, I want to uh, uh, introduce to you uh, a friend and uh, a church long term, long time church member. It's Bear. He back with us. Uh, and praise the Lord. Amen. That's 32 years ago, he's a, a young youth that's just running around, help me go and pick up other youth uh, when we plan our church. So praise the God that we, he moved away and now just recently come back to Houston and uh, praise God for wonderful, wonderful people. Their lives have been touched and transformed by the ministry. We're grateful that the Lord have allowed us this privilege. This morning, my brother and sister continue on the series, uh, Make Room for God. We know that this time of the year and this time of uh, uh, mankind history, we know that there's so much busyness is, um, uh, is equivalent in our culture, in our life, we thought that uh, the invention of uh, emails and iPhone and uh, text messages, all of that will help us, uh, but unfortunately, it's even make us more busy, busier. So when life is tough and busy, we have a tendency to let us crowd God out of our life. But today, as we reflect on the, um, all the um, commercialized of Christmas, we see that people, instead of focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, focus on God, the great giver, and say that people try to find give and run here and there, and all of that, um, it just caused people to lose direction in their life. But today, I want to invite you to look with me way to make room for the presence of God throughout your day. Because this is very important. The secret success, victory, and unusual exploit uh, the anointing servant of God have in their life is laying like the fact that God's presence is always with them. This is the key that we need to have. Their, their success, their achievement, is lies like at the fact that God's presence is always with them. So my brother and sister, do you want to overcome great problem? Do you want to fulfill your uh, divine destiny? If the answer is yes, then you need the power of his presence. And may God help us to learn from this wonderful scripture um, and the respond attitudes of Moses that help us um, find this key in our life. You know, Moses is the most busiest man. He leads uh, young and old more than three million people. And you see that not in a great condition. Lead them in the wilderness. There's no uh, time for them to grow anything. Uh, don't have any supply that in the sense that, you know, all the greed a uh, leader may have. He in a very tough condition, and he had to face many challenges in his life. That's why he found the key, and it's very important for him, and also very important for, for us, uh, is the presence of God. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 13 to 14, the Word of God says, Now therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. That's a powerful understanding and statement from Moses. This is, was Moses asking God to go on the journey with him. 
Just like we need to ask God to go with us on the journey of our every day in life and continue to go on in our journey through our life. We need the presence of God. We need God to go with us. Moses noted here that he do not ask for a sight and wonder or miracle, but he asked God to show him his way. God answered by saying that his presence will go with him. And my brother and sister, this is very important. You know, when you have God, sign wonder is come with it. But you try to look for sign wonder and thing in line with our God, you will never have it. And you, you may have uh, temporary things, but in the end, it will disappoint you. But when you have God present with you always, then you will see all the supply, all the power, and everything that has come with God will come into your life. Many Christians are completely ignorant of the presence of God. Today, we see people run here and there and through all kinds of things. Many ministers and pastors know nothing about the power of the presence of God. Yes, you know, they just do things uh, as go through the motion of the ministry. But my brother and sister, God present is the key for everything. We want to serve, then we need to serve out of the abundance and the fruit of our relationship and come out from the presence of God. The blessing of God, you remember I shared with you uh, three messages ago. The word blessed in Chinese uh, is depict the picture. It's the word it's the compound word of the word that God and man in the same garden in one day. The day that God and man in the same garden, that's the word bless in the Chinese. That is a wonderful picture, a symbolic word in the Chinese character to help us understand the blessing is when you and God spend time in the garden. The blessing is when you and God spend time in His presence, face to face with God. That's what Moses is looking for. And having the presence of God with us is worth more than riches and fame of this world. In verse 1 and 3, in chapter 33 of Exodus, then God, then the Lord says to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendant I will give it, and I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hittite and Jebusite. Go up to the land flow from milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, let I consume you on the way, for you are stiff-necked people. You see here, God say, Moses, take the people. I will give you riches of the land. I will send you my angel, the power of the angel. Because God, at that time, the people, their heart is so far away from God. And, and they just want to look for God's mighty hand. But God say, no, I am not go among you anymore because you are stiff neck. Stiff neck here, and the people are so stubborn that their neck is so stiff that when God tell them, they not turn to God. Um, that's why God say, if I go with you, I will consume you. So their heart needs to be changed. And, and Moses here understand that he say, riches of the land uh, flow from milk and honey flow with milk and honey. He said, that is not enough. The power of the angel, you know, angels have power. We see in the book of Revelation, just one angel can come down and bow Satan for a thousand years and he cannot do anything. Just one angel one day can, can kill hundreds of thousands of people. But angel, angel, go with him. It's not enough for Moses. My brother and sister, the presence of God, May God help us to have the heart that Moses had. And Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, 
but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Verse 12. We see here that even when God say, I will give you fame, because I know your name. You know, that's an awesome, awesome statement and privilege for Moses. You know, God created all of mankind and God know Moses by name. That's an awesome thing. But to Moses, it's not enough. Favor. You have found grace and favor with me. It's not enough. You know, God favor, God grace is important. But it's not enough for Moses because Moses know that when the presence of God with him, then he, God will make him great. With the presence of God with him, then the favor of God will be with him. That's why he go beyond what people are looking for. And my brother and sister, Moses refused to go up because he know better. He know that, you know, angel is not as strong as God. He know that riches of this world is not enough. Because my brother and sister, when when, when, when the enemy attack, when God is not there with you, whatever you have can disappear in one day, in a matter of seconds. So the presence of God is very important. So this time of the year and this time the Lord has helped us to focus on make room for God, make room for God present in our life. We can go anywhere when the presence of God is with us. I witnessed that. And I'm a testament of that. You know, this year alone, the Lord has sent me to four continents and preached to thousands of people because the presence of God is with us. My brother and sister, we don't have to work hard on that. But when the presence of God is in your life, people will recognize that. And people will come and ask you for advice, come for direction, and so on. You know, even... In this um, uh, last weekend, as we pause and stop and, and celebrate Christmas, people call me uh, and, and ask, Pastor, I know that it's your day of rest, but the presence of God, that's what we need in our life for situation. Uh, people um, uh, who in late um, term of their pregnancy, the baby died in the mom tummy. And they heard that God has answered my prayer in the past to bring baby back to life. And praise God, when I pray, you know, doctor said there's no movement there, no heartbeat. But praise God, when we pray and we declare life back into that baby, the baby come back alive. And praise God for that. And my brother and sister, as you, as you pray and as you in the presence of God and outflow from that, the favor of God is with you, and he will answer your prayer. Even the word of God said, before you call on him, he already draw near and say, here I am, what you need. Isaiah 58 tells us that picture. So you can go anywhere when the presence of God is with you. I can go to many places because his presence is with me. I share with you before, many times I sit down, contemplate, even this morning driving in, I said, God, what a privilege for me to serve, to minister the words of your people. Because not only you here, but thousands upon thousands of people out there is listening, and their lives are blessed. And when uh, Julian helped me send out our family picture to um, you know, people who have uh, followed me and, and out uh, Facebook friend. There's testimonies coming in, there are praise report, and people say, Pastor, thank you for all the wonderful sermon that you preach. Our lives have been changed and transformed. What a wonderful report that we can see. My brother and sister, you can go to many places because of his presence is with you. But without him, don't you dare go up. Moses know better. That's why he say, oh, no, 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 God. Not angel, not your favor, but you, your presence. 
Because if not, you're not going up with me, then who am I to lead your people to go anywhere? I don't care what direction it is. If the presence of God is there, he will take you. He will give you peace and rest. Because in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. But out of his presence, there's frustration, multiple demons, discouragement, sorrow, fear, sickness, sin, suicide, or distress, exaggerate. You will see that this go on and on. But when the presence of God is with you, it doesn't matter what's going on around you, you will continue to go as steady as you can because the presence of God is with you. So the question I would ask you is, do you have the presence of God with you? Always. Or have you lost his presence? More than anything else, ensure that you have his presence with you always. That's the key for your success. That's the key for your life to have significant impact in this life. Wow, what a powerful, powerful conference that we have. When the presence of God is, is revealed in a tangible way, I continue to hear people just come in and share wonderful things that happen. You know, people get healed instantly in the presence of God. People were set free. We heard on, on Christmas Eve a phone call from Ohio. There's this young lady who come in, and she have they have demon in her. And she report later that while I'm standing there to translate for Achille, he said she wanted to grab a, a, a chair to come up and hit me. He said some force tell her to do that. But praise God, as the presence of God is coming in, bang, it's hit her. And she down on the floor, foam in the mouth, and totally set free. She says she stand up, and she look up and say, everybody is lovely. Pastor Khan is a wonderful minister of God, man of God. Wow, what a difference. You see that the presence of God is so powerful when revealed to us, when we make room for him. And he, when he come in, things is made very easy. Pastor Samuel from Vietnam and Pastor Tim, uh, I have asked them to come in and help us on uh, man the deliverance tent. They said this year, their job is so easy. They don't have to work hard. Just like people are totally free in the presence of God. And they don't have to pray hard like previous year. The presence of God, my brother and sister, is very important. The presence of God in your family, in your marriage, it will be a wonderful thing because when God is there, it will be a different in verse 14 and 16, and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Have you noted that? When my presence is go with you and I will give you rest. You see, in the presence of God, there is rest. God will give us rest. Instead of running here and there, helping, fucking because of other things, the busyness of life, my brother and sister, spend time in the presence of God. Make room for him. And when he directs your path, you will accomplish more than ever. Let me define the word present. In the Hebrew word, it's the word paniyam. It translates 76 times as a, the present, the present of God. Paniyam is derived from uh, the root word of pana which is mean to turn the face. You see the picture that when God working on somewhere and then when you in his presence, he turned his face toward you. It's give the picture of, of, of God favor, of God turn towards someone in acceptance and favor. His presence fill up permit, saturate our life. When he turned to us, he turned toward us in acceptance and favor. You may wonder and say, but pastor, 
This is why it's contradiction. This is the presence of God is mentioned in the Bible. It's God is everywhere. Let, let, let me show you two aspects of the presence of God. Omnipresent. God present is everywhere, every place. He's present in the whole of creation and this universe. That's a picture when you see that God omnipresent. But the Bible also tells us another aspect of his presence is when God reveals his tangible presence. Let's say the presence of God, omnipresent of God. In Psalm 139, verse 6 to 8, it says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. God's presence is everywhere. In Jeremiah 23, verse 24, said, Can anyone hide himself in secret places? So I shall not see him, say the Lord. Do I not feel heaven and earth, say the Lord. So that is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Isaiah 66, verse 1, Thus say the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. That's a powerful picture for us. And we know that wherever we go, it doesn't matter. Even to the moon, God's presence is there. Praise God. But manifest presence of God is what we go after too. God chose to reveal himself sovereignly. At times, it's, it's a place that we can send the presence of God. Just like right here at VBC, the people walk in, and when they have the antenna tune, they pick up the presence of God in a tangible way. And you see that, unfortunately, people go in and out in the presence of God, but they did not, did not understand or did not able to pick it up because their sense is so due that they cannot pick up. My message today is to help you uh, get sensitive again into the presence of God. Make room for Him. Make room for Him. At times, this strange sense of God may pervade a building, a community, or a region, affecting those who come within his power. In 1735, during the revival, Jonathan Edward said, the town seemed to be full of the presence of God. The whole town. I heard a story that in the radius of 10 kilometers, when God's power and His presence is manifest in this place, people, they fall out in their house. People were touched and healed in the presence of God when He revealed it in a tangible way. Some places and at certain time. In 1858, during the American Revival, story tells us that when ship is come from Europe, Sailor can curt like sailor. They curt like storm. But as soon as they approach the shoreline of America, suddenly they feel the conviction is so strong that they cry, they weeping, and say, Who can save me from this heavy, heavy conviction? And many of them repent and get their life right with God before they land American saw line. And story after story, ship after ship, they come in and they share the same thing. My brother, when we host, when we make room for the presence of God in each and every one of our life, when we come together, the presence of God will explode. And that's when wonderful things will happen. And my prayer is, Together, let's go back to the place that we will make room for God. Live moment by moment. 
conscious of the presence of God is the key to Christian living. This is the key to growing personal relationship with God in the midst of busyness of life. We need to make room for God. Let me share with you some way to make room to practice the presence of God throughout your day. First, begin each day conscious of God. That's the first thing you do when you wake up. When you first wake up in the morning, focus on God. Meditate on a hymn, a psalm, or a portion of the scripture. You know, many times when I wake up, I just continue to lay in bed, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give me direction. I yield my life to Him on that day and begin to meditate on the goodness of God. I wake up and say, God, I'm breathing again. I'm alive. So praise God. And wonderful, God just touch and feel me first thought of the day. I meditate on the scripture that I read, I read uh, the night before and ask the Lord to continue to reveal and teach me while I'm asleep because I know that my physical man is asleep but my spirit man is still awake and able to receive from God and ask him to teach me so I can understand his word like I should. And praise God, that's how I begin my day. That is the first way that you can begin your day. Conscious of God. Put aside all the care and the pressure of the day and praise God for who he is. The Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Praise him for his presence and his promises. My brother and sisters, that is very important. Does that mean that the night before we need to make sure that we get ourselves ready when we wake up, we want to enter into the presence of God right away. But it's not so to many of us here in this country nowadays. We jump out of bed and off of the alarm. Then here we go, we run here and there. And the whole day, instead of we in control, in action, we react to life. It's just like life is just throw at you crazy things, and you dug and you do all kinds of things during the day. Take control and put yourself in action for you spend time with God and have the conscience of God. First thing of your day. Second thing is read God's word. <sighs> this is the problem of today, churches. People is not reading God's word anymore. May I suggest to you that this year make a resolution for your life. Own a Bible. I know that we now have, you know, Bible in our iPhone and so on. But the important is when you read the Word of God from the page of the Bible, and then you highlight, you underline, you take note of what you have read. I found you cannot do that. You cannot mark those places and able to come back to what you have received from the Lord. Get a Bible. And if you don't have money to buy a Bible, come and let me buy for you a Bible. I'm not serious because it's very important. It's very important for us. You know, this is my soul. I use it, and I learn to use it well. So everywhere I go, you know, when, when I misplace the Bible, I say, where's my soul? Because, because a, a soldier, a, a man without a soul, he cannot fight back the enemy. So own the Bible, read it, highlight it, bring it with you to church. May God help us that 2016 we will have people here at VBC come and ready to receive the Word of God. You start with your way at home. You need to fall in love with the Word of God at home. 
Because the word is the logos, is the Lord Jesus Christ. When it's written down, it's the Bible. That Jesus, character, picture, and everything. Instead of our mind is, when, when we pray, you know, I, I remember when I grew up uh, in uh, my hometown, when we're in kindergarten, we go to the Catholic church, they have kindergarten there. And we attend it. And in front of their church there is the statue of Jesus. And every time when I close my eyes to pray, I always see that. And I know that it's not my Jesus, but I don't know what to do. And then when I read the Word of God, from the Gospel, from the pace of the Bible, I continue to begin to see Jesus in a different light. So now when I pray, I see the Jesus who healed a man, the, healed a blind man, healed a crippled man. I see the Jesus who walked the dirt roads of Palestine and, and continue to minister to people, love on people, not the one who, you know, the Catholic Church, uh, have the status, you know, still hang on the cross and the head is still tilted to the side. That's the dead Jesus that they worship. I worship a living, breathing, uh, a living Savior, the Jesus that is get out from the pace of the Bible and become my Lord and my Savior. That is the Jesus that we want to know and get in touch. Make room for him. Read his word. Ask God for spiritual insight from the portion of the scripture that you read in the morning. Say, Lord, give me the insight of this scripture. I have a, a bad habit, but it's a good habit. The only time that I can pray deep pray is when I'm in my car. Because as I commute from, from, from uh, Marshall, Texas to Houston, Houston to Marshall, Texas to go Bible school there, I have four and a half hours each way. So while I drive, I ask the Lord to give me the inside of the scripture that I memorize. And sometimes I'm trying to explain it to God and say, God, is that a good way to explain your word? Is that the inside that people need to help? And praise God, there's time that the Holy Spirit will say, no, you explain this way. That's why my ministry has been known throughout the world today. It's very easy to understand, able to grasp the truth, to apply into people's lives because the insight that I gained from God. Study His Word in that way. Let the portion of the scripture you read in the morning ask God for the insight so you can apply into your life. Ask God to teach you during the day from that verse. Every time when I meditate in the Word of God, even Back then, when I mow my yard, I keep going and meditate on the one scripture. Christmas Eve, somehow, I get a sense, it's, it's almost like the Holy Spirit say, go to our spot. And I say, what spot? And the Holy Spirit, you know. So I hop into my car and drive to the park that I used to spend hour and hour there pray and reading the Word of God, a read good book. And the minutes that I drove in and parked my car, the presence of God would just fill my car. I take the walk on the trail, and the presence of God is so strong there. It used to be our spot. Now it's the, the corner of the sofa that I sit and, and read the Word of God and meditate on it. But it's good to go back to just like the spot that a couple have. In, in Marshall, Texas, there is a lake, and there is one spot that is just like the right place for you to just put your car there and sit there, watch, look at, out to the water, spend time, meditate on the Word of God, spend time with Him. Now that's my spot. Driving is the time that I pray and meditate on the Word of God. Powerful place. You need to create that spot, a spot that you have appointment with God. Spend time with Him. I know that this, you know, life is busy. You may not have the opportunity to go to the park or certain spot, but create a spot that you and God can spend time and, and 
learn and meditate on His Word. And you, by doing this, you will find greater spiritual depth in applying God's Word in your daily activity. We need the Word of God, my brother and sister. There's so much noise around us. There's so much voice wanting to give us direction and so on. Turn on the TV, you see commercial this and commercial that, tell you that this is best for you. And today on, on Facebook, I mean, almost everyone that I know on Facebook now, they become doctor. They give you all oh, this herb and this uh, vitamin and, you know, this will cure you this and do that. Suddenly everybody become doctor. Pharmacists, they subscribe thing and so on. What? And if we spend time so much on Facebook and not face the book of God, then we will get direction from wrong people. People who play doctor, people who play psychologist. And it's messed up. Spend time. Have a conscience of God first thing in the morning and read his word. Third thing is pray. Pray. Each morning, dedicate yourself to God's service. Romans 12, 1 said, we need to offer ourselves a living sacrifice to God. Confess any known sin and pray for the needs of people around you. Speak to the Lord throughout the day. Don't wait for a full more time of prayer. Throughout the day, when I have time, even when I walk the hall of the office, I talk to him. Yeah, he's my friend. I want to spend time with him every minute that I have. Sometimes people will say, Pastor, are you still here with us? I say, yes, but I'm communed with God. I talk to him. Speak to the Lord throughout the day. He cares for you. Every detail. Sometimes I tell God, well, Father, I'm overwhelmed with things. Sometimes I tell God, God, I need help. The other day when I at home and uh, try to paint my, the front of my house and uh, have some break and I go in and I watch on Discovery Channel uh, the Alaska bush people. And I saw this thing that's going on. This family, they try hard to build a house. And then the winter is come upon them. It's sub 20 degrees. And they're not able to finish their house yet. They try everything, even loan their labor to, um, to buy or trade the generator so they can build their house quickly. When they're about to give up, they say they, they have no way to be able to finish this. They will spend the winter in their tent and maybe get killed for that. And suddenly, noise is coming. When the father is get sick and he lay in the tent, he cannot do anything. Suddenly, the neighbors show up. They bring with them tools and hammers and all kinds of things. And within a few hours, they finish the house with them. And when the neighbors show up, suddenly, tears just swelled up in my eyes. And they say, God, I need that. And I can hear from him respond and say, help is coming. I say, Lord, there's so much need to be done. We carry this vision for so long. And the Lord say, help is coming. Praise God. Spend time and have those moments with God. It's the wonder for your soul. The fourth thing is let thankfulness be the habits of your life. You see, people of today, is they complain everything from the government down to whatever their life condition is. But my brother and sister, turn everything, any adversity in your life, with thanksgiving because you know that God has provided for you the solution for whatever you face in your life. Give thanks. 
A thankfulness will produce joy in your life. Complaining, discontentment will bring sadness in your life. So if you want to have joy in your life, be thankful. And the fifth thing is learn to be quiet in God's presence. That's why those spots that you need to have is very important. In the hectic of this world, God's word said, be still and know that I am God. That's what we much need. Because God speaks to the quiet, attentive heart. Let me give you this example. Somebody make an appointment to see you or come to your house. And right in the middle of a lot of people is going, talking and so on around you. And because you have that appointment, you have that attentive heart. Your ear is not in the room. Your ear is outside the door. And the minute you hear some footsteps, or somebody knock on the door, you're the first one who can hear it. And my brother, that is, that's is the key. That's the key. So many of us, we don't have the attentiveness to God. God shout, He sent thunder, and we cannot hear anything. But those who have a quiet, attentiveness heart toward God, just a slight movement of God, you note it right away. And my brothers and sisters, maybe that is the key. Have an appointment expecting to hear from God, expecting to enter into His presence because you make room for Him. Here Moses say, God, not fame, not angel, not the riches of the land, even your favor. I want to be in your presence. You need to go with me. If not, do not send us up. The only thing that makes us different than the other people of, of other people groups is your presence with us. Without your presence, we are no people. So make time throughout the day to be still and be quiet before God. There are certain times of the day that I shut down everything. I begin to sit in my sofa there and spend time in the presence of God and they say, Holy Spirit, come. Minister to me, Lord. Come. And we spend time together. And then I rise up from that time. I said, let help life. Let explain, have preach the word. Let minister to people. Let help and touch people's life. Let's go together to minister and bring the good news to the lost. And now from that experience, many times we see God at work in a wonderful way. Thursday, as we, um, I say, excuse me, Wednesday, as we have the outreach or evangelistic emphasis at King Solomon, Five minutes before eight, we're supposed to have a service. There's only six people in the room. And a brother coming in, because of that day, there's so many parties going on in other place in, uh, in that um, um, shopping strip. The parking is packed with car. So he find his way and then able to park and he come in and say, oh, I thought that this, the room is packed with people because I cannot find a parking spot. That is just my heart just sunk and they say, oh God, what's going on here? And they say, God, you have promised me this morning that people will come and pack this room and they will hear the gospel. So Lord, bring fulfillment to what you have promised because we have spent time and I have told you that we let go and gather the people and let them hear the good news in their life. I walk that room and as I turn around and make the decision, let's go ahead and start the service. I have locked, bang, we 
start the service and as we sing the first dance of joy to the world, I begin to hear door is keep open and people coming in. We have to set our chair and next thing we know, the room packed with people. Praise God. You know, my heart can be a thousand miles away if condition like that is surface and without spend time with God. But praise God, I'm, I'm right there and praise God that He show up in a wonderful way that people get saved and people get healed in an awesome way. One lady, she had a nurse for the nursing home for the Vietnamese elderly. She coming in and she say, Pastor, I have this back pain for 12 years. And then I got hit by the 18-wheeler a couple days before. And right now, I'm barely able to sit. And I say, no problem in the presence of God here. You will get your healing. He said, I know, I know that my, my spine is crooked because my leg, I can walk limping because I know that my right leg is shorter than my left, left leg. And they say, no problem. The presence of God is here. He will heal you. And as soon as we get her leg up, surely her right leg is about two inches shorter than the other one. And in the presence of God, I command that leg to grow. Everybody watching saw that that thing is just growing. She said, oh, it's growing, it's growing. And then when it's even, I say, now be healed in the name of Jesus. She stand up as a nurse. She say, I never, never see this before. I say, Pastor, I have been watching your ministry. I have hear the radio program every Sunday. But now I make a decision that I will come to this Bible study every Wednesday from now on because you have carried the presence and the anointing of God that people need and I need it. So my brother and sisters today, I believe the Spirit is challenging us to desire, acknowledge and honor the presence of God. Make room for Him in our life, at home, at work, relationship and ministry to acknowledge His presence. When someone is healed, point to God's presence. When God is moving, talk about His presence with us. In the use of spiritual gift, honor Him. It's not your, it's not your ability, but His supernatural ability. In our ministry and in church service, acknowledge His presence is here. If you cannot sense it, tune in. Let's fine-tune your attention and able to be in a place that you can have a reception of His presence. Honestly desire and seek not just His power, not just sign and wonder, but His presence. Because in the presence of God, God will give it rest for our soul. Don't allow business and other distraction to hinder you and stop you from coming to Jesus and from growing in your relationship with Him. Watching your life, I know that you let business of life take toll or crowd out the presence of God in your life. Let us spend a few moments. And I challenge you to reconnect with God. So you can see life much clearer. So we can come out from the place of meeting with God. That Bob Sorge say, the secret place. The place that you, you know that God is there and you spend time with Him. Come out from the place that you have set 
in your life, the place that you have a meeting with God. And my brother and sister, apply the principle and continue to practice the presence of God. Have a consciousness of the presence of God throughout the day. Because God wants to spend time with us, not once in a while, but He loves us so much. He wants time with us. But quiet down, reflect, and when the Holy Spirit nudge in your heart, whatever needs to be fixed, fix it and get ready and make room for God in our life. He deserves it. And He longs for that. Father, we thank You for Your patience. You love us so much. You allow us to live on the blessing of yesterday. But Lord, like Moses, we ask that you come and you reveal your way to us. We see your hand already. The Lord asks, we ask that you will come and reveal your way. So we will know that right in the midst of this crazy time that we live in, we know your way. And we can walk according to your will. For we know that time will be much harder. You know that life we have so much difficulty in day to come. That's why, God, we want to make room for you in our life. Come and take place in our life. Lord, we surrender the chair, the throne of our life. And say, Lord, come take control. Rule and reign in our life. We declare that your kingdom was established in our life, for we let you be the king of our life. Give us direction, give us your way. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will help all of us here to strengthen our relationship with the Lord. Holy Spirit, come and help us, Lord. Give us the wisdom, give us the strength to push away the care of this world and the pressure of life. And Lord, consciously, we acknowledge your presence in every second and every minute of our day. Thank you, Lord. Reveal your tangible presence with us. We know that people around us need it. There's so many needs around us that only your presence can satisfy. Help us, Lord, to know your presence and become the carrier of your presence everywhere we go. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to evaluate our day, our year. In these few days of the end of 2015, Make things that is need to be correct in your life. Make room for God. May God help us, all of us. We come and report the wonderful blessing that we spend in the presence of God. God bless you, and we see you. Amen.